Yeah, it was... Uh, there was deputy, no Prime Minister. There was no Prime Minister. It was yeah. Deputy Prime Minister's questions this week because the PM is on his way back from Brazil where he's been at the G20 summit this yep. week. Um, so it was Angela Rayner, who obviously we've seen uh, at the dispatch box plenty of times, um, up against a man by the name of Alex Burkhart, who yeah. you're an ordinary person. I had to look it up myself, to be perfectly honest with you. So you're an ordinary member of the... The big burger. <laughs> Yeah, you <laughs> I can't believe. I was ashamed when I realised uh, yeah. who it obviously uh, was. It um, took it took me. I, you know when you think, oh, well, I think I know the name, and then it, as your brain telling you, you think you know the name, but you yeah. don't know the name at all. Yeah, he's sort of uh, risen without trace almost. So he's he's now the shadow chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. Which right. Is a bit of a what a gig! So he's effectively deputy. Yeah. Effectively, it does nothing is really what that title <laughs> yeah. means. Yeah. So this was his big moment to come out and and shine. Yeah. Um, and he led with his chin a little bit because he unfortunately decided initially to go on inflation statistics out today, which showed mm. inflation has gone back up again. Obviously, bad news for the government. So he mentioned that, and then Angela Rayner came back with him and said, well, hang on a minute, you were um, Minister for Growth under Liz Truss, and inflation then was uh, over 11%. Yeah. So that was a bit of a, an own goal, really. Well, that I was think. job done, wasn't it? Well, you were th after that, although, to be fair to him, he didn't let it knock him off his stride. He was... Um, yeah. Fairly confident, actually, and more confident than his boss, Kemi Bednar, has been the first, first couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. He's appeared quite nervous, I think. But he was very angry, and he was screaming and shouting, and uh, maybe I had to dial it down a little bit. But in terms of um, performance, it seemed to please the Tory MPs, put a bit of lead in their pencil, as it were. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. Not, not too bad, although, as I say, he got off to a very unfortunate start. But there wasn't a groundbreaking row that... You know, is no. going to resonate and dominate <laughs> the headlines. No, we we really get it's more more heat than light. Um, yeah. Uh, when it comes to PMQs these days, unfortunately, so it's all about pantomime, really. Um, it's interesting. Starmer has been, of course, at the G20. Um, he, he talked yesterday about the UK's commitment to continue supporting uh, Ukraine. Mm. Um, that story is, you know, the last 48 hours has really taken uh, a bit of a turn. And now we've got a sort of misinformation, fake news element to this, where Ukraine are accusing Russia of faking warnings about a major attack in Kyiv. Yeah, well, exactly. So we had uh, the US Embassy um, basically closing uh, because they thought they were going to come under attack from Russia. Now, clearly, that would be a major, major escalation yeah, of course. Where, where that to happen. Uh, the UK, um, we've asked Number 10 about that this morning, and th at the moment, anyway, they don't appear to have the same intelligence that America has, so they don't think that they need to do it. They, they keep it under constant review in terms of the UK Embassy yeah. and keep it. There's no plans to close it down, but there's certainly... Um, uh, a raising of the temperature, I think emanating from Joe Biden giving the go-ahead for Ukraine to use um, long-range missiles, yeah. American long-range missiles, um, then uh, Putin changed uh, the rules basically surrounding when it's okay for mm. Russia to use nuclear weapons, which is quite scary, um, yeah. lowering the threshold, basically saying, well, if you fire American weapons on us, then that gives us the right to use nuclear weapons. Now, clearly, that's sabre-rattling, but you don't like to be in a situation yeah, where you're in that, threatening. In that territory of, of, of vocabulary, then you, you know, you, there, that's a game-changer. It is, yeah. I mean, well, yesterday, I actually mentioned uh, Keir Starmer at the G20. Um, one of the questions at his press con closing press conference yesterday evening, he was asked, should Brits prepare for nuclear war? Yeah. And he was almost taken aback by the question. Because well, yeah. um, it is one of those things that, yeah, you think, that's well, like... A, a relic of the Cold War, the 1960s, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Sure. Well, I should have left that in the past, but it's... I, I don't think we're on the verge of a war, the, but... It you know, reminded me a little bit, not to make light of this in, in, in any way, but, you know, sort of in the 80s, 90s, there was that... Certainly in the 80s, uh, you know, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Two Tribes, all of that yeah. sense, you know, do you... But I'm sure Blue Peter did a feature on how to build a bunker in your back garden. Probably, they, yeah. yeah. I mean, if they didn't, they should have done, frankly. <laughs> yeah. um, and there was all this kind of... And I remember laying in bed as a kid thinking could we build a bunker in our back garden? So that threat was kind of around. Yeah, this is sort of the Reagan era, I guess. That's late, true. Late yeah, Reagan era. There was, that was sort of height of the Cold War, wasn't yeah. it? Um, was it not that uh, that really scary cartoon, When the Wind Blows, which was yes, about the, where the wind nuclear blows, yeah. fallout? And, and there were loads of different TV shows. I, there was, I've never seen this one called Threads, but apparently it was a, a dramatisation of sort of an apocalyptic Britain, etc. Um, and there's a few more out there as well. No, I, you're right. You're right. In the 1980s, I was uh, at, at primary school then, and I do remember it being vaguely, yeah. vaguely aware yeah, of yeah. Um, 
the threat because yeah that was before Gorbachev obviously came along and Perestroika the wall came down and all the rest and yeah all Perestroika that. all that and yeah. Thatcher doing business with this is a man we can do business actually got the name the Iron Lady wasn't exactly it? correct um, yeah. and uh, the Cold War ended um, yes. but there's no doubt that Putin kind of hankers after the, the Cold War to a certain extent I think he'd like to recreate yeah. the Soviet Union obviously sees the West as an enormous threat to his country yeah. Um, and yeah isn't scared to, to throw threats around about, about nuclear weapons. But there is, the, one of the things we've been talking about, Kevin, is, is this, there's this sort of curious, there's a contingent of people who have a big admiration for Putin. Now, we spoke to Isabel Oakeshott earlier, and she was saying she thinks it's a kind of almost, a, I'm slightly paraphrasing it, but almost kind of like a macho thing. Mm. There is, in the same way that some people sort of fall in love with Trump, it's not necessarily being right across all of his policy ideas or his backstory. M many of these people don't know much, but they like the sense of this sort of alpha male, looks after his own people, yep. tells it like it is, doesn't care what other people think, yep. not interested in the global side of life, mm -hmm. just the domestic. It's almost that's enough to attract a kind of, and maybe that's fine, by the way, you know, we live in a democracy, you can think whatever you like, but it is interesting that view is out there. I mean, others are more nuanced about specific reasons why they think actually Putin isn't quite the aggressor the West say he is, but there is genuinely a, a, a perhaps small but perfectly formed group that admire Vladimir Putin. Yeah, and it cuts across left and right, you know, the far left, Jeremy Corbyn was always, you know, accused of, um, having a soft spot for Russia, shall we yeah. say, reluctant to criticise Russia. And we've also had on the right Nigel Farage being accused of being reluctant to criticise yeah, yeah. uh, Putin as well. You remember during the election campaign, uh, he was interviewed and he, he sort of equivocated over uh, the cause of the Ukraine war, basically yeah. saying that NATO had provoked um, Russia. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. certainly as not the government line here. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, not a left-right thing. You know, I think people, you're right, there is a, on the sort of, further reaches of the political spectrum, there is an admiration for mm. the strong leader, uh, the anti-establishment figure, yeah, who, you yeah. know, who kind of cocks a snook at democracy. That's and all it, of that. All that type it? of yeah, thing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and Trump, is, is, again, is, I think, is a, is a product of that as well. Talking of establishment figures, or maybe former establishment figures, Lord Mandelson, uh, we all remember him, who coined the nickname Mandy for a while, didn't you? I That's forgot right, all about yeah. that until yeah. this very moment. Mandy, yeah, um, yeah. I couldn't, as I said, Lord Mandelson, I thought, what is now? Peter Mandelson. Um, urging Labour to involve Nigel Farage in mending ties with Elon Musk, citing national interest. Now, if I didn't know differently, I'd think Lord Mandelson was gearing up for a job somewhere. Yeah. It's well, strange, isn't it? It's very strange. He's always on manoeuvres. He's always on manoeuvres. It's Peter, and um, that's certainly not the government line. Uh, as far as Nigel Farage is concerned, yeah. we've had a succession of Labour ministers come out and say, well, they should focus on being MP for Clacton for the next four or five years yeah. rather than worry about um, uh, being the ambassador to Washington sure. uh, now that Trump is going to be president again. Um, but, yeah, you're right, uh, Manderson has got his eye on the UK ambassador's job himself. Yep. So you've always got to remember him, man. He's always working the angles, you know. So he's he, that will play well in Washington, obviously. You know, saying that um, the UK needs to have a relationship with Elon Musk, yeah. get in that inner circle of Donald Trump confidants. And yeah, he mentioned Nigel Farage, uh, but as I say, that will really annoy. There was an family. interview uh, that I think was with Lewis Goodall, um, where Mandel uh, was asked about the US election result. I don't know if you saw this. I thought Goodall was going to literally it. disintegrate at one point because he was so shocked by this. But Mandelson, you know, why did the Democrats lose the election was essentially the question. Yeah. And it was, I thought he was going to go full on Danny Dyer at one point as well. He was going <laughs> to talk, well, you know, they went too woke and you can't go, well, you've got to speak people's language these days. And I thought, I know he's a, you know, he's a, a very slick operator, you know, one of the, 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 the very sort of inner circle that got Blair and New Labour into power. So his his qualifications in electioneering and and design is 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 all is there for all to see, but it, it was clearly he's thinking you know I need to impress the Trump administration and I need to say stuff like this. When you hear Mandelson talking about you know if you go woke you go broke, mm, yeah. you start to think wow. Yeah, I mean the thing is about uh, Peter is you got to remember as well he's just that ultimately a political pragmatist. Yeah, he is a, a Labour tribalist. He is yeah. of the left, but. At the end of the day, we saw that with New Labour. Pragmatism is the thing. You've got to go where the voters are. Yeah, yeah. You don't, um, you don't put yourself up against what the voters are, are telling you. And yeah, the lessons that he's learned from yeah. uh, the American election is that the, the Democrats did go 
too far to the left, too liberal, really, and that obviously yeah. not go down well with them. He's a, he's a curious a character, isn't he? I went to, when I was in the press gallery, there was, uh, you know how they do the lunches, uh, yeah, different yeah, speakers yeah. come along, yeah, yeah. which are curiously on the record, aren't they? They're not off the record. You'd think they'd yeah, be they're off all the, on record, the record, but they're on the record. They're on the record. There's quite yeah. a lot gets said at those things. No, they're it? good, which is why they're worth I think some of the yeah. speakers don't realise they're on the record. <laughs> But all yeah. manner of so just briefly for those just just to fill you in, the, these lunches happen what every six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, uh, yes, what, kind two of or three months, months yeah, something yeah. like that. And very, it could be anybody. It could be a former prime minister. It could be yeah, you know be very big, you know big, top big, people. Big, big um, names, yeah. And on one of these months, Mandelson was the speaker, and I thought I don't know if I want, do I want to go and hear Mandelson speak for an hour and then take a few questions while having lunch with him. You know, mm. do I want to do that? Because there's only what about. 50 of you there yeah, or something. Not, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. And um, he was amazing. He was absolutely amazing. It was mesmerising. Yeah, he's a great communicator. So he did his sort of 30 minutes and then took the questions and it was, I thought, wow, you know, this guy is an operator. Yeah, no, he's a very impressive guy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he does Even if he has got an iffy mortgage. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Or did have. Well, that's the other thing, you know, that, <laughs> well, we're interested to see how that plays, if that works against him as he's wanting to be... The ambassador, because there are a few skeletons there. You know, he's had a bit of controversy. I think he had to resign twice as a minister in the Blair government. Well, it was one passports. One was to do with passports. One was the to Hindu, do with the Hindu the, brothers. The, the, Hindu brothers yeah, right. And the other one was to do with the, the loan that he got from Jeffrey Robinson. Jeffrey wasn't Robinson, yeah. To buy. Right, yeah. Can you let me eight hundred grand? To buy house yeah, apartment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that came back to haunt him. But then again, yeah. he's a remarkable survivor because remember Gordon Brown brought him back to be yeah. the business secretary. Um, in 2000, which was amazing, really, because he was very much a Blairite as opposed to Absolutely, being a Gordon yeah. Brown supporter. Forgotten but again, a pragmatist, you know. Pragmatist. If that is, you know, if that is what's better for Peter and better for he believes the country, then yeah. he, will, um, he, will, he will do well, it. Well, is Rachel Reeves cut from the same political cloth in terms of, you know, grit and determination and a slick operator? She's now still under fire, really. I, don't, I, I still can't work out whether this is an SW1 story or whether this penetrates elsewhere. Claiming she was an economist on an official document um, when updated link, LinkedIn profile says she clearly wasn't. Now... Mm. It, the, the question, I suppose, is if she would say she's an economist chair, like if you're a bricklayer, for example, and you happen to take a bit of time out and go and work in a library, but somebody asks you your profession, your mm. occupation, you'd still say bricklayer. Yeah. So is that her kind of defence here? So and was she ever an economist as such? Yeah, well, it depends. How, you get into the weeds with this one a little bit. It depends how, how do you define an economist. Um, now, I've spoken to Treasury people today, and they've said that, that it's all to do with what it said on her LinkedIn profile, which yep. they've had to update. Um, now, they say that this wasn't her fault. It was um, over-enthusiastic member of staff, I think, had put in the wrong details in the LinkedIn right. profile, and it's now been updated to reflect the true story. Um, the Tories understandably want to keep this going because mm -hmm. um, it's all about trust. Yep. And you know, if if you can't be trusted to fill in your CV properly, how can you be trusted to run the economy? True. Um, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere just yet. And I, I, I don't know. Famous last words. I don't see this being uh, the end of a, the, the scandal that brings down uh, a chancellor. But you know, it's embarrassing. It's awkward for the government. Number ten were asked about it after PMQs and they said, look, as far as we're concerned, the most important job she's got is to balance the books and be straight yeah. with the public about the state of the public finances. She's got her wholehearted support. But it so does have because I, you know, initially thought, well, because Guido's not let this one go no. and, um, and that's fine, that's their territory. But yeah. I did think, you know, actually it's quite a certainly the H boss uh, thing was I thought it quite was, serious. It was to do with retail banking, wasn't it? She, she was working in retail, retail banking. Essentially, she was giving out leaflets at the TSB. Um, I made that <laughs> up. Um, but while claiming she was an economist uh, at, at HBOS. Yeah. Now, when I think of an economist at HBOS, to me, that's as senior as it gets, rather than working in retail Not banking, in which floor, is... Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the difference between being a care worker and being a nurse. You yeah. Know? It's kind of... There's a, there's a big old gap there, both credible positions, etc. Um and she did study, she went to Oxford, she did study at the London School of Economics, so I, you know, I can't work out if she is an economist, but there is a possibility that this could erode some credibility. Yeah, exactly, especially at a time when a lot of the um, decisions and announcements that she made in the budget are coming under so much scrutiny yeah. and so much criticism. We had the farmers' protest yesterday, obviously the inheritance tax stuff. The big announcement that she made before the budget, just after they got in over winter fuel allowance, obviously figures of out course. yesterday showing that's going to push you know, up to 100,000 pensioners into relative yeah, yeah. poverty. Um, you know, those, these types of, um, so, or, so or, her decision-making is already 
under yeah. question. Um, and this type of thing is a distraction that she could well do without. Indeed. Um, we hit the clock, Kevin. Good to see you. Kevin Schofield is political editor at HuffPost UK with us on the programme. Back